Hello, what's up guys? It's your boy JT Vance on another tier list video in Marvel Super War featuring the support class. Let's go! So welcome back guys. So before we start with the video guys, if you like this kind of content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you're gonna be notified on the next upcoming video. Before we start guys, just a disclaimer that this is all based on my opinion. But if you have something to say or suggestion guys, please don't forget to hit that comment section and tell me what your thoughts are. So I will be basing four categories based on the tier list that I'm gonna be presenting to you guys. So first would be team survivability. Second would be team effectiveness, third would be crowd control, and then fourth would be hero difficulty. Alright, so I have eight, I think eight, okay, so I have eight support classes here, guys. So if I mean support class, guys, I mean pure support class, not the tank support class, guys. So we have four, I'm sorry, we have eight candidates. There's Polaris, Cersei, Invisible Woman, uh, Professor X, Pixie, Cloak and Dagger, Ebony Mo and then Mantis for the last, right? So that's gonna be eight support classes, guys. So remember, guys, team sustainability, team effectiveness, crowd control, and then hero difficulty, right? So we're starting off with Polaris, guys. Um, based on Polaris, guys, what I think is right off the bat, she's gonna be around um B tier, B tier. So let's start off off the bat with tier list, and then there's we're gonna be adjusting her based on the categories that we've mentioned. Okay. So for team sustainability, <clears throat> although she doesn't have heal, guys, she still has her shield to her allies. But the but that's it. She only can boost the speed and the shield for her allies, and that's it. She doesn't have heal for allies. Uh, although she has a good damage output for a support, but as a, um, but a pure support, or as a, if you're playing, I mean, this is a tier list for support heroes, um, she can actually only do some shielding to her allies and crowd control. For So for team serve sustainability, um, I'm still gonna put Maintaining her at B because she doesn't have heal. Um, she only has shield, but she has strong crowd control. That's why I'm just gonna be maintaining her at tier, pro tier B, right? Tier class B. She has so sustainability is not really that good. Only she only has shielding. Team effectiveness, she is good for team effectiveness due to her ultimate because that's um, that's a good stun, which is a very, very, not very, very, but it has a very long uh, stun, around 2 seconds, which is a very big impact during team fights. But she really goes down a lot. I mean, she could be possibly be an A-class hero, but... Due to her not having a heal, only a shield, puts her at tier B for me. Okay. Um, as well as she is not really your basic hero for new beginners. When I met, when I say hero difficulty, guys, um, I'm only basing it as a new he or a new player or a noob player. So. <clears throat> She is not a basic hero. She needs mastery for you to become effective during or playing her as an as a support role. Because remember guys, you need the combination of her skills to be effective using her uh second first, second and third skill to activate or to proc the passive of those skills. Right, so to the magnetism between negative and positive, positive and positive, and and think about it, guys. In a split second, you need to be as fast as possible. For example, if you want, um, you want to protect some of your heroes or some of your teammates by pushing them apart. So you need to master them right away in a split second, right? And also, if you want a hero 
or your team ally to kill a certain enemy hero, then you need to have the polarities uh, to be attracted to each other so that you will have uh, you will be able to let probably your assassin to get a higher more chance to kill that ally because it's gonna be pulled to that uh, assassin right so hero difficulty she's not a basic hero so she's gonna be a difficult hero to for I mean for basic for new so for new players so she's gonna be a difficult player even me guys I'm still having a hard time using her. I mean, not. I, I'm not really playing her as much as a support hero. I'd rather choose um, support heroes that has heals, such as uh, Cersei, uh, Mantis, and uh, Cloak and Dagger, uh, rather than her. Um, I'm gonna be. I I can't drop her to C because she's really strong at team fights. And her ultimate is really very effective during team fights because it has a good range, uh, a high amount of stun, not high, I mean a high duration of stun, and it it can barely evade it because it is a very fast casting ultimate. She only has shield, that's why I can't put her on top of A because she doesn't really have that sustain much she only has like um, shielding she only has shielding team effectiveness yes she is good crowd control she is good as well but the difficulty of how you're gonna be mastering he her is difficult guys you really need to master coming I mean, comparing to other support heroes she is a difficult hero to master for beginner players so, I'm gonna be maintaining her at tier, tier B. Alright. Yeah. So, that's my final. I'm sticking her at uh, tier class B. Or tier list B. Alright. So, next guys would be... Next would be Invisible Woman. So, same. Um, I'm gonna be putting her at B as well. Putting her B. Um... Team sustainability guys, same as Polaris, he, she doesn't have, she doesn't have heal but <clears throat> she does have shielding as well. But the shielding that she has is situational because you need to be around her, you need to be around her. To get the shielding that she has because remember when she fires her skill one remember that it needs to come back first to her and then gains the shield right and you need to stay closer to uh, invisible woman so her shielding is really very situational her sustain I mean her sustain for her allies what makes her at B tier guys it's because of her ultimate her ultimate her crowd control and hero difficulty I mean she's not that difficult to use I mean you can cast her ultimate I mean it has a good range you can at least hit two or one enemy with it The only downside for Invisible Woman is her sustain, but actually I can put I can put her on E, to be honest, because team effectiveness she is very effective due to her ultimate, which is very helpful because you're gonna be turning all your team if played right, guys. If played right, you can make your team invisible gain the movement speed plus when you initiate you'll be able to stun in the entire team the entire team guys the entire team right um compared to polaris guys you can see polaris ultimate i mean yeah it's hard to, to evade because it's very fast but 
Invisible Woman's ultimate gives you the edge to outmaneuver the enemy because if played right, if you have a team coordinated attack with your team, then you could make uh, the most out of her ultimate <clears throat> by maneuvering the exact moment, the exact time where she will place your ultimate, where you're gonna be invisible, and when they're gonna be launching, when you're gonna be launching the ultimate, right? Remember, guys, you're gonna be stunned. For a few minutes and you're gonna be invisible your team is gonna be invisible right so that I could make her a tier at A tier A that's why she can't be an S because of her sustainability for her team team effectiveness yes very good crowd control very good as well because the stun on her ultimate and the stun on her skill 2. Although her skill 2 just only targets one enemy, but at the at the beginning of the game, it's very helpful for your ally or your marksman to kill or to poke a lot of damage to the enemy team because you're going to be hitting or you're going to be stunned because you're going to be stunned and damaged at the same time. And also, and also guys, the hero difficulty, as I mentioned earlier, is not really that difficult compared to Polaris, guys. Compared to Polaris, really not that difficult. So I think, oh no, I can put her an A. Yeah, if played right, I mean, if played right, guys, she could be. She is a tier list uh, hero, but if you're playing solo without the coordination, uh, it's easily gonna be B. But I'm basing it here, all of this with good coordination with your team, like a five on five team. So I'm gonna be putting her on A. But if you have something to say, guys, please let me know. Uh, I know that Invisible Woman could be a B for you or could be a C so let me know in the comment section of what you think on my tier list for invisible woman same goes to Polaris guys <laughs> right so jumping to Cersei uh, which is the second uh, second to the last hero that was added to the game so Cersei off the bat guys off the bat I could put her easily at A or even S right a or S, but let's start out. I'm just being generous of putting her at no. Right off the bat, guys, I think he she's at uh, I think she's at A tier, right? So team sustainability, guys, um, actually good because she has heal. She has good heal. And you can even proc it twice based on your skill one and your passive. Remember, if you stack a call up, uh, if you stack a couple of hits of using your skill one, you're gonna be proccing your heal uh, passive. Uh, same goes to your passive. If you reach 10 seconds, then you can proc the heal again. Uh, that's your sustain. And even during team effectiveness, guys, team effectiveness, she is very effective. When you have uh, range attacks coming from, okay, so let's just think about um, a good basic lineup like a tank, a marksman, um, an energy or a mid laner, a support, and then um, a fighter or assassin, right? So basically, you can negate three attacks coming from your marksman, your your energy. Most of your energy, because most of the energy or mid laners are range attacks, um, and then um, probably your support as well, which is I mean most of the support heroes guys are range attackers, and then they have range skills, so you can negate those as well. And remember, guys, assassin also has range attack which you can negate as well 
So more or less, you can negate most of the attacks when you are having a team fight. So she is very powerful when it comes to team fight due to her having a shield. Plus, plus on top of that, guys, uh, all the attacks that you've thrown at Cersei shield will be at team effectiveness, uh, sustainability. I won't say very um, high. But it's still a good sustain. And crowd control, guys. Um, she has a crowd control. Uh, her first skill. Ah, no. Her second skill, which is... I think it was glass, I think. The glass effect. The glass effect. So, it enhances or it could increase the damage from your allies, uh, physical or energy. So, that's good as well. She has a crowd control. But not only that, guys. Um, for blinking away, that's also a crowd control because remember, if your team is rep repositioning due to her shield having on front of your enemies, then they need to rep reposition using their blink skill or whatnot. But remember, guys, her third skill is a crowd controls. Uh, is a crowd control skill. If you blink away when you're inside, you're gonna be um knocked down remember you're gonna be knocked down so that's a crowd control skill as well but but it's um conditional but it's a conditional crowd control skill uh, although it's not part of the characteristics or the category she also has good uh, zoning capabilities zoning capabilities guys and to be honest guys uh, Cersei's Difficulty is not really that difficult to master. It's not really that difficult to master. I can put Cersei at tier S. Yes, I can put her at S tier. Yep, yep, I can put her at S tier. Based on the category, guys, that I mentioned, I can put her at S tier, yes. Final. That's my final decision. S tier. So next, guys, would be Professor X, the most recent support hero that was added to the game. Um, okay. Team sustainability. She doesn't, he doesn't have heal. He doesn't have shielding for enemies. But he has zoning um, damage resist. But that's a zone. It's very conditional, guys. Off the bat, off the bat, I'll put him at B. Yeah, I'll put him at B. Sustainability, guys. Um, it's very situational for him. It's because, although it has a good range, or it has a good area, but still... He is more of a defensive hero or a defensive support class because you can only tri or you basically you're gonna be triggering his uh his uh, his dome when somebody as a, is attacking you right so that it's either they're gonna be stunned or slowed inside the area and probably just um if your ally knows about it and they have low health then they're gonna be going inside there to reduce the damage that they're or they're receiving but the condition there is you need to go to where professor x is because you can't really how do you say this you can't cast it far from him the zone is gonna be created around professor x so you need to be close to professor x so basically 
This skill is not really for attacking purposes, it's for a defensive purpose. Compared to Cersei, um, or even the first three heroes, um, Polaris, you can cast the shield. You even cast speed boost to your allies so that they can catch up or to initiate attack. Same goes to Invisible Woman. Uh, it could be used for attacking and defensive both ways. Um, Cersei as well, you can use it for attacking uh, the crowd control. Attacking or defensive. But in the case of Professor X, uh, mainly it's used for defensive purposes to help your allies um, have more resistance to damages because you won't you would not see professor x going to the front and activating his shield from like uh, what an invisible woman is supposed to do you're not going to be using professor x for that you're going to be using his dome of resistance i'm just naming things uh, dome of resistance when somebody is going after you or your backline and then you're going to be casting it so that you will be able to protect your backline so the only team effectiveness that i could really see has very good hype potential is this ultimate but it's very easy to avoid especially um your team is far apart it's good it's good for team fights that are clumping up and it's good for scouting because it it has a scouting capabilities but it's easy easily avoidable My Pixie is a very uh, highly mobile support hero. Uh, right off the bat, um, yeah, yeah, I could put her. I could put her at B. Um, team sustainability. Her shield is very difficult, guys. Because, although you can shield a lot or every ally in your team, but the downside is, guys, but the downside is, remember that you're a support hero. So more or less, you're going to be at the back line of your hero to support them. And um, giving them shield, healing them or whatnot. You're most probably going to be on the back line. The downside for Pixie is that, you enable for you for you to be able to give your shield to your allies you're gonna be you need to pass through your allies to give them shield so more or less you need to be part of the front line or you need to initiate as well to give them shield right so that's a bit uh, that's a downside from her shield although she has high mobility yes she can blink out from there but remember guys, her skill 2, uh, you can blink out, blink in, uh, probably you're going to be sacrificing your skill 2 
uh, in order for you to go back to where you are so that's two skills automatically just to give uh, give shield to your allies guys and remember guys and remember it's very difficult to hit an ally or where they are because you need to you need to predict exactly where your allies is going to land uh, so that you will be able to shield them remember you need to pass through your allies to give them shield what if your ally is a very highly mobile uh, probably your assassin is the one to initiate the fight and then you need to shield them so that they will survive the initiate but remember guys you need to hit exactly where your allies is to give them shield so a very difficult task for pixie because you really need to hit them where they are to give them the shield that you have that's my only concern with her sustainability of uh, the sustainability part a uh, team effectiveness I don't see her as well as being effective in the game or even the team remember her, her ultimate probably she gives them slow uh, slow and whatnot and pushback um but more or less that's for defensive uh defensive support same goes uh same to professor x because um yes you could use it as an initiate but not really that helpful yes you can do her ultimate to protect your allies uh as what i said uh defensive purpose her skill one is good um but um it could it's it's good for poking though it's good for poking and slowing down enemies um her skill two and skill one is her mobility skills uh which are good but <clears throat> that's only her trying to be annoying in the team fight her ultimate i i want her ultimate to be revamped or something because <clears throat> It doesn't I mean the push is not really that effective if the push is really strong then I suppose I can put her probably higher but I can put her at C tier because I mean yeah she's a very highly mobile support hero but you really don't need to be mobile for a support hero yes it is helpful but it's not mainly the role of a support hero. Being highly mobile is good for assassins, for them to escape, uh, for for them to escape. But for support heroes, as much as possible, you need sustained skills rather than mobility skills. If you're a support hero, so for skill two, skill three, yes, it's good for mobility. Skill 1 is good for crowd control and skill... I'm not really even considering uh, her ultimate being a good crowd control skill because it's just a, it's just pushing away heroes. So it doesn't really help. It helps in a sense of giving time to your allies to retreat in a sense. But I'm still putting her at tier C. Tier C, yeah. I mean she does have her benefits but I'm still putting her at tier C. Yep. Um next would be cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger would easily be um if her ultimate was not revamped, I could put off the bat automatic A tier. But I'm gonna be putting her at B tier. Let's see how it goes. So team sustainability, yes, she does have a good sustain. However, it was better the last time because it has higher heal, but now she has a decent amount of heal. They replaced the high heal with a shield and heal. So, still good, still good. I'm not complaining, but comparing to the heal of our last hero, um, it's still good. It's still, I can't complain. It's still good. So yeah, team sustainability, yes, uh, it's good because you have shield during team fights and it heals you at the same time. 
uh, crowd control, which is a very good, she has actually very good crowd control, although uh, it has a small area of effect, but it is very effective for um, team fights. Remember guys, it's not just you being slowed, you're gonna be silenced as well. The silence is really um, what makes her skill to very good, it's the silence, because you can catch um, enemy heroes that are highly mobile when they dash in to initiate. And then you can cast your skill too, and then for them not to escape because they're gonna be silent, slowed, and if they stay long enough, they're gonna be stunned. So I really like her skill too. From I mean the rest of her skills. I the the best skills that is I mean the best skill for cloak and dagger in her kit is her skill too. Uh crowd control, yes. Yeah, she has a good crowd control. That's the although she has slow for a skill one, but uh, more or less that's just for slow. Uh, probably some a little damage or a little poke, but mainly it's for the slow. Um, it's good, but it only has single target, but it still adds with the crowd control for a support hero. So good, good. Not I mean not excellent, but good crowd control for. Um, how you say this? Uh, for Cloak and Dagger. Hero, um, hero difficulty. Hero difficulty, she's not difficult to use. The only difficult part for uh, Cloak and Dagger is her ultimate. Is her ultimate. Because you really need to target the ally. Although they, if I'm not mistaken, they tweaked this a few times. Uh, which target is to be prioritized using her ultimate and her ultimate I can easily put her at S tier before the nerf and the revamp I could put her at S tier guys really I could put her at S tier but now I can put her at A tier now although her ultimate only targets one ally but that is a very big impact guys for a single target if you can target um, your carry or your tank or save one ally for being bursted down because for example if thing uh, initiates a team fight and then she he's gonna be taking the damage of all the probably all the damage or their skills at first uh, hit but you can heal him back by casting his ultimate and then he can disrupt the team fight once again. Or or if you can save your carry. I mean if you can if the carry can kill like one or two and then he's already low and then you save him from a burst attack, then you and then he can initiate another kill. That would be a very good good um, turnaround for your team actually his her ultimate is a very good however it was very very good when he can uh, pull the enemy or the the ally that he cast her ultimate because remember her ultimate before that whenever you cast your ultimate he brings or she brings the ally to where cloak and dagger is but now, um, yes, you can delay. I can say delay because more or less that's the purpose of what she's doing. Save or delay because before you can really save your ally. But now it's just delaying their doom. Because per se, let's just say you just save them for a temporary moment. Because of a burst attack, but once they come back, they're still in the same position, and then most likely they're gonna be damaged as well, again or again, because more or less the cooldowns have already been refreshed by your enemy team. So that was the, just the downside of our ultimate. I don't, I'm not really sure why they've revamped the skill because that the ultimate was really good. But they destroyed it with some of the other nerfs that they did, such as Hawkeye's ultimate was uh, destroyed. She was really good before, guys. She was really good before. 
She could be easily at S tier before, but now I'm gonna be putting her at A. Yeah, I'm gonna be putting it or her at A. And I, I don't even. To be honest, if I'm using Cloak and Dagger, I don't see a huge amount of heal coming from her. I don't see her heal that much. I'd rather take the heal rather than the shield. It was good healing before. Now they've cut it in half so that the other half is shield, the other half is heal. I'd rather take the heal. Or that your team could last longer in battle. But yeah, I'll stick to my um, opinion on putting her at A tier. So jumping on Ebony. Ebony. Hello, Ebony. Ebony, I put him at B. Team survivability, guys. Team survivability. Um, not really because team survive the only shield that he gives is on a single ally same with Polaris although he has heal is not really that good I mean it's good but it's very situational guys you really need I mean in order for Ebony Mo to heal an ally you need to hit his skill to an enemy hero if you can't hit an enemy hero with it then goodbye to your heal so it's very conditional that's why he's in B tier right now uh, and most of his skills are really shit very very situational and it's not even easy to use he's a bit difficult to use not for beginners as well so team sustainability yes um, you can cast automatically his skill 1 to your ally to be shielded. Um, his, his heal, yes. His heal is good. And, uh, however, you need to hit an ally before you can get the heal. So, I'm sticking him at B. Crowd control. Crowd control is good. Crowd control is good. Especially, especially if you can cast your... Your, I mean, if you attach yourself to, I mean, I'm saying this, guys. If you are well coordinated as well, he is very effective on a team fight. His crowd control is very good as well. When if coordinated very well, but it's very difficult to use. Yep. I mean, he can go solo, guys, mid laner. I've seen uh, other players using him in solo lane. Or mid lane, making him uh, um, an energy hero rather than a support hero. Um, I'm sticking him at B because he's very effective, not really that sustainable. Um, very, his so sustainability is very conditional. Skill 1, you need to hit your allies. Um, your heal, you need to hit an enemy hero. Uh, crowd control still uh, very situational because you need to hit an ally, um, or to very to to have him very effective. You need to be on a well um, organized team or coordinated team for you to maximize his potential. Remember, his potential, guys, is he can um, go into your ally and then do all his skills. And then do the crowd control, do the healing, do the knock up, things like those. But if you don't have or playing him solo, uh, is not very good. That's why I'm putting him at B. I can't, um, I can't put him on C because I rather choose him than Pixie or Professor X. But he's not a very beginner. Same goes to Polaris. He's, she, he's not a basic hero to be used. He's you need to be uh, of mastery or play him a few times before you can even um, play him good or play him better. 
you need to master him quite a bit before um, maximizing his potential on a team fight. And guys, if you're using Ebonimo, I don't want, I don't suggest you play him on a single battle. I'd rather you pick him if you have a well coordinated team because you can only see his potential when you have a good coordination with your team. So I'm putting him at B tier. And lastly, guys, Mantis. Mantis before the rework, guys, the revamp was on B tier. Was on B tier. Because her heal um and damage or whatnot. Oh no, I can even put him or put her on C tier before the rework. Before the rework, guys. But after the rework, guys, after the rework, she's A tier. Because of her heal. Her heal really makes your team very effective during battle because the huge amount of heal that she gives if you don't have an anti-heal item you're really gonna be having a hard time uh, killing her allies or even her or even her so her, even her skill one guys now has a good poke and uh, good damage as well uh, her skill two very very good even the passive or skill 2 is very very good because you can proc 2 heals, uh, 2 allies twice. Remember, remember guys, I'm not quite sure if it's a passive or skill 1 because when your skill 1 bounces through your enemies, it could proc a heal as well, right? So I think it was uh, the skill 2's passive. And then you can you can trigger your skill 2 as well, then that's multiple heals for uh, 2 of your allies. Okay, Remember that. Um, although I can't put her at A tier, only at A tier, it's because of her crowd control. He does, she doesn't have crowd control. The only crowd control that she has is her ultimate. And it's only for a single target. Only for a single target. That's why I can't put her here unless she can do a crowd control or mind control for at least two enemies or three enemies. Then that automatically she's gonna be on S tier but you can only mind control one enemy and that and that can easily be countered by um what tactical skill was that? Uh anyways so that's why I'm putting her at A tier. Alright. So no D tier guys, no D tier because there's none yet for me. So this is my tier list guys for Polaris gonna be S tier. A tier is Invisible Woman, Cloak and Dagger, and Mantis. B tier is Polaris and Ebony Maw. C tier is Professor X and Pixie. Um I thought uh Professor X was really OP due to his ultimate because I thought it was an auto aim, like um it automatically hits your enemy. But I've uh I found out that it doesn't trick it doesn't hit your your enemy where they're going but the last um, the last area where your enemy is at is gonna be locking his ultimate so I think I thought it was really OP but when I tried to use him it's really not OP unless you're an FFA it's really OP if you're using Professor X at FFA or free for all battle then his 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 ultimate is a bit OP. But in the regular map, not quite not quite much. So that's my tier list guys for the support heroes. So if you like this kind of content guys, or if you want me to do a tier list for the other class as well, please let me know in the comment section. And if you have any suggestion guys or comments regarding my tier list for the support class, please let me know as well in the comment section. And if you like this kind of content guys, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're going to be notified on the next upcoming video. Peace out guys!